Basketball always was and always will be a game of giants. Don't believe the small ball hype. Even though the post-up centers like Shaq have almost vanished, they've been replaced by lanky and athletic uber forwards like Giannis or Anthony Davis. However, due to a three-point evolution, shorter players can get more opportunities in today's NBA, and there are many success stories of players listed at six feet or below. Here are the 10 shortest players in the NBA right now. Ish Smith Six foot zero. Ishmael Larry Smith has quietly finished his 10th season in the league. In his 10 years, the playmaker from Wake Forest University has played for 11 different teams, sometimes changing as many as three teams in the same season. It's easy to see why. Smith is too short for the modern NBA. He cannot defend stronger and taller players. The three-pointer was non-existent for most of his career, and his accuracy is hovering around 31%. He is also a below 70% free throw shooter, which is terrible for a point guard. But despite these flaws, Smith somehow invented a career that lasted 10 years. Not bad for a short player who can't shoot. Ish stuck around primarily because of his exceptional speed and effective handle that always managed to get him to the cup. Last season, Smith looked fantastic for the Washington Wizards. He improved this three-pointer to the league average, he pushed the pace for the second unit, and was really solid in the pick and roll. I hope the man finally settles down. He deserves it. Kyle Lowry, six foot zero. There have been just two Hall of Famers listed at six feet or shorter, Calvin Murphy and Allen Iverson. They will surely be joined by Chris Paul and quite possibly Kyle Lowry. Even though he only averages 14.7 points and 6.2 assists per game, Lowry could end up in Springfield due to his six all-star appearances, NBA ring, and an Olympic gold medal. Despite unflashy statistics, Lowry does all those little things that aren't necessarily seen in the box score. He's not a player who will single-handedly make your team a contender, but the team will play better when he is on the court. On defense, Kyle Lowry is a pest, a very intelligent and extremely annoying pest. He is built like a bulldog, and it's incredibly difficult to push him around despite his small stature. He's a brilliant positional defender and a hustler who is always among the lead leaders in charges taken and recovered loose balls. On offense, he's a smart player who knows how to take advantage of defects in opposing defenses, and a solid scorer who may not always be able to create a shot for himself, but knows how to score and distribute in pick and roll and hit a three when needed. His quality is subtle, but it's undeniable, and Kyle Lowry is one of the best little guys to ever do it. Kemba Walker, six foot zero. Kimba Walker is built like an ordinary high school kid, and he does not jump as if he has springs in his sneakers. However, he can get buckets on anybody with a lightning quick first step and fearless drives to the hoop, paired with a deep bag of feints and crossovers. After three successful years at UConn University, he declared for the NBA draft, where he was selected seventh overall by the Charlotte Bobcats, where Kimba had anything but the easy start. As a rookie, the Bobcats won just seven games in a shortened season, which is the worst record of all time. However, just two years later, Kimba pushed them to 43 wins and a playoff appearance, which he would also accomplish two years later. However, Charlotte didn't build a good enough team around Kemba who chose greener pastures and signed with the Celtics in the 2019 offseason. With four all-star appearances and career averages of 20 points and over five assists per game, Kemba is turning into one of the best players ever at six feet or under. Carson Edwards, 5'11". The Boston Celtics stashed draft picks for years which allows them to take high-risk, high-reward players in the second round of the draft. And the most exciting prospect in that category is undoubtedly the point guard, Carson Edwards. He spent three years of his university career at Purdue at the Big Ten Conference. As a junior, he averaged 24.3 points and Harden-esque 10.6 three-point attempts per game. He was hitting a lot of them too, and broke the March Madness three-point record with 28 made threes. With such a shooting pedigree in the league that loves shooters, it was surprising how Edwards fell all the way to the 33rd pick. Carson had one of the most memorable performances in summer league history when he scored eight three-pointers in a quarter, one shy of Klay Thompson's NBA record. However, even though he appeared in 37 games for the Celtics, the lack of size and physicality did bother him, and he only averaged 3.3 points with unimpressive shooting performances. Still, I believe he can turn it around because he can shoot the lights out, and such players never forget how to score. DJ Augustine, 5'11". Augustine's NBA career began in 2008 when the Charlotte Bobcats selected him with the ninth pick, and Michael Jordan believed he could be a great contributor for the team in the future, despite the lack of size. Jordan's great hope produced mixed results in the four years with the team, and Augustine proved to be a good shooter and a nice complimentary piece of the bench, but probably shouldn't have been picked as high as ninth. After Charlotte, DJ moved around a lot and changed seven different teams before settling in Orlando, where he's playing for the last four seasons. Despite being a role player who was averaging 10 points in four 
four assists for his career, Augustine has a respectable 12-year tenure in the NBA and counting. His shining moment came in the first game of the 2019 playoffs when he won the game at the buzzer against the future champs in Toronto. Frank Mason III, 5'11". Frank Mason III is another two-way player who plays for the Bucks and their G League team, Wisconsin Herd. Mason was a great college player for the Kansas Jayhawks, where he'd win National College Player of the Year in 2017 as a senior, together with consensus All-American selection and multiple other awards. He was selected 34th overall in the 2017 draft by the Sacramento Kings, where he played for two seasons, averaging under 16 minutes per game in 90 games, after which the Kings waived him. The Bucks picked him for the 2019-20 season, but he spent most of the year in the G League, where he was named the G League MVP with the averages of 26.4 points, 5 assists, and 3.4 rebounds per game. Tremont Waters, 5'10". Tremont Waters is also of Puerto Rican descent, and together with height and nationality, Waters shares a lot of basketball similarities with Berea. Tremont has a high basketball IQ, and with 198 assists, he broke the LSU Tigers record for assists by a freshman set by Ben Simmons in 2016. Waters averaged 15.6 points, 6 assists, and 3 rebounds per game in his two years in college, after which he declared for the 2019 draft where he was selected with the 51st pick by the Celtics. Boston signed him to a two-way contract, which means he was split time with the Celtics and their G League affiliate, Maine Red Claws. Due to Celtics' depth at the point guard position and championship aspirations, Waters played in just 11 games with the big boys and had spent most of his time in the G League, where he shined. He averaged 18 points, 7.3 assists, and 3.2 rebounds per game in 36 games for the Red Claws, and was named G League Rookie of the Year. J.J. Barea, 5'10". Jose Juan Barea had an extremely successful four-year college career. He also went undrafted in the 2006 NBA draft and then made an NBA roster through great performances in the Summer League. JJ never averaged more than 25 minutes per game in his career and started in only 13% of his games. Still, he was immensely appreciated for his energy, high basketball IQ, and professionalism. Barea was incredible in transition, intelligent in the pick and roll, and capable of getting rid of taller and stronger defenders with his dribble. Despite his size, Barea impressed through his long career, with the pinnacle in 2011 when he played two brilliant games in the NBA Finals that helped Mavs win their first NBA championship. At the age of 36 and with an Achilles surgery behind him, we may have seen the last of J.J. Barea in the NBA, but I wouldn't be surprised if he signed a minimum deal for a team in need of veteran leadership. Chris Clemens, 5'9". Chris Clemens knew he wasn't going to be a tall person, and his basketball idol was Allen Iverson, just like he was for many other aspiring players not blessed with height. Clemens got hops despite a small stature, and with a 44-inch vertical, he could dunk the ball with ease. He was also a great shooter and ball handler, which was a promising sign that he could make it to the pros despite his height. He went to Campbell University, where he would break numerous records. As a senior, he became the Big South all-time leading scorer, and with 30.1 points, he led NCAA Division I in scoring. Despite such a storied college College career and a first-class scoring pedigree, Clemens went undrafted in the 2019 NBA Draft, which surely wouldn't happen if he was just a few inches taller. He played for the Rockets in the Summer League and impressed team officials who offered him a two-way contract. Clemens played 33 games for Houston this season off the bench, and because the Rockets love small ball and high-scoring guards like peanut butter loves jelly, Clemens earned himself a fully guaranteed deal. Isaiah Thomas, 5'9". Isaiah Thomas's family realized that young Isaiah is addicted to basketball, as he'd spent all his free time on the basketball court, with a clear goal in mind, to become an NBA player. Isaiah's dad admitted that he had several unsuccessful attempts to convince his son that it would be wise to have a plan B in addition to basketball. Isaiah, however, was interested in nothing but plan A. His father took him around the playgrounds where adults played and left him to fend for himself in an attempt to show him that it would still be good to at least think about plan B. But the exact opposite happened. Isaiah managed. He survived and thrived among the tall and stronger players, both in high school and university. And then, in the 2011 NBA draft, he was selected with the 60th and the last pick of the draft. But the position wasn't important because his dream finally came true. And in the words of Conor McGregor, IT wasn't there just to take part. He was there to take over. The little guy proved all the doubters wrong and showed that he should have been a lottery pick. He became one of the best bench scorers in the league, and soon enough, he became a starter. Then, when he came to Boston, he absolutely exploded. In 2017, he was the third leading scorer in the NBA with 28.9 points and had a better scoring average than LeBron, KD, or Curry, which is pretty impressive for the shortest player in the league. On his late sister's 23rd birthday, 
just a week after she passed away, Isaiah dropped 53 on the Wizards in the playoffs, which was as impressive as it was heartbreaking. He was turning into the best player under six feet who ever played, and he said that the Celtics should bring the Brinks truck for his services. Instead, they traded him because of his hip injury, and it proved to be a correct decision. IT lost some of his speed, which made him ineffective on offense and a complete liability on defense. Instead of a max contract, Thomas was almost out of the league until he settled with the Wizards on a minimum deal. Still, even though there was no fairy tale ending, Isaiah Thomas was at least for a moment the biggest story in the NBA and one of its brightest stars, and he'll forever remain an inspiration for all ball players under six feet.